Hey guys, Just Jack back again, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favourite games of all time. And not only that, my favourite game of the Resident Evil series, and that game is... Now if you saw my video on the original Resident Evil, links above and below, you know that that game holds a very special place in my heart, as it was my first foray into survival horror. But its sequel improved upon it in every single way in my eyes. Especially with this series, sequels aren't always a hit. After seeing the preview in a magazine, I was so hyped, and releasing so soon after playing the original, I could barely contain myself. It was releasing close to my birthday once again, so what I was getting that year was a very easy choice. After booting up the game and watching the cinematic, the excitement levels were at maximum. The music was thrilling, and seeing the improvement in graphics mixed with zombies, explosions, and introductions to new characters, what more could anyone want? We then start the game and have played our intro cinematic, which changes depending on what character you chose. And this was all decided by the disc you chose. Features galore. The voice acting, while not amazing, is miles better than the original, which might not be saying a lot, I know. But the improvement in voice acting really helps you get more invested in the characters, and straight off the bat, they feel more fleshed out, and it's easy to become invested in their story quite quickly. Of course, I'm talking about Leon S. Kennedy, a rookie cop whose first day on the job goes extremely south when greeted by a small-scale apocalypse, and Claire Redfield, sister of our boy Chris. And it isn't long after their first zombie encounters that their paths collide and we are greeted with this memorable scene. Uh, wait! Don't shoot! Get down! <gasps> they make an escape, but it all goes wrong pretty quickly. They have a stowaway who makes them veer off course and straight into a lamppost. And just to top things off, our truck driver a bit earlier isn't feeling so hot, and he crashes his truck, separating our new heroic duo. It's here our second foray into true survival horror begins. Now, I wasn't sure if it was going to be as good having our zombie survival escapades move to a larger city environment, as opposed to a smaller scale and claustrophobic setting, but my fears were put to rest pretty quickly. Seeing the effect the T, or in this case G-Virus had, upon Raccoon City, really gave a better scope of how dangerous the virus was, and how bad the situation had gotten. Cars upturned and burning, the dead roaming the streets, and despite the bigger setting, it still felt claustrophobic. In the beginning section alone, as we fight our way past our first section of the dead, and into the safety of the local gun store, here we are introduced to Mr Kendo. But we can't rest for long, as our rotten friends burst through the window, and we are forced to flee, and Mr. Kendo becomes dinner. Ouch. We then have to navigate down back alleys, streets, and even a bus, which is full of zombies. Claustrophobic doesn't even begin to describe the stress that place gave on first playthrough. And that's when we make it to one of the most iconic locations in Resident Evil history, the Raccoon City Police Department. There's so many memorable and iconic locations in the Resident Evil series, but this is my all-time favorite, and it's for a few reasons but my main one here being the music. As you may or may not know, music and sound design in survival horror games is vital for me, and this game does not disappoint. The music in the police station is the most memorable of the series for me. It's haunting and I can recall it so easily, even after not playing for a while. There's no end to the perfectly chilling soundtrack throughout this game, which I will link below. The team's really knocked it out of the park on this one. The gameplay isn't too far away from the first game. We have tank controls and fixed cameras, but like I've said before, I think this really adds to the experience. Not being able to see threats but hearing them is a good feature for survival horror and struggling to control your character in stressful situations, although maybe frustrating nowadays, really adds a genuine sense of panic. The game really ups the ante on characters and character drama, whether it's the shady dealings of Chief Irons, which get pretty dark, the transformation of William Birkin, and his wife Annette who spills some serious story beans later on, or one of my favourite characters of the series, Ada Wong, who is equal parts shady, alluring and downright awesome due both in part to good writing and voice acting, on the most part, I found it so much easier to get invested and care about the characters, 
Leon and Ada especially, but I don't think I'm alone on that. Something that helped this game improve upon the original is its enemy design. From the standard zombies having more varied designs and more to do like crashing through windows, the zombie dogs haven't changed much, but are still a scary presence. But most are overshadowed by some big standouts for me. First is the liquors. When that first cutscene plays, they are scary from the start. With their speed, agility, and the ability to decapitate you, they're a force to be reckoned with. Between their exposed brains, whip-like tongues, and bladed hands, they are just nightmare fuel in the best possible way. We then have one of our two big bads, William Birkin, who, through injecting himself with the G-Virus, becomes an ever-increasingly grotesque monster that we encounter several times throughout the game. My most memorable encounter is when we face him on the transport carriage. It's such a confined space that causes anxiety as we scramble to find shelter. But even then we aren't safe. Even when we're inside the carriage, he starts to thrust his claws through the roof. And then we have the T-00 Tyrant, or commonly known as Mr. X. Although being another tyrant, this guy is much more of a humanoid. From the first introduction, dropping from the helicopter, he instills fear every time you come across him. He's essentially invincible, and although he mainly walks, that somehow makes it worse, and believe it or not, they actually improved him in the remake, in my opinion. The story is a lot more involved this time around, and even references events and characters from the first game. Arriving in the star's office for the first time got me giddy back in the day. We also learn more about the origins of the T and G virus, and as the story progresses we learn everything isn't as it seems. And even when Ada is exposed to her ulterior motives, I'm sure I'm not alone when I was upset when she fell from that walkway. And as the game ends, much like with the original, I couldn't wait to see where the story and where the characters went next. Also, just like with the original, there is replay value as well. Both characters have an A and B scenario, which intermingle and link with each other. Depending on which scenario you play through dictates which bosses you encounter and the characters you interact with. If you are able to finish both scenarios with an A ranking on at least one of them, you unlock a bonus game mode called the Fourth Survivor. And although probably not intentionally, this introduced us to a fan favourite character in Umbrella Special Operative, Hunk. But his popularity was probably also to blame for Operation Raccoon City. There's also a parody of Hunk scenario in which you can unlock on completing the game six times with an A rank on one of them, in which you play a giant block of tofu. I can't see them getting a mainline Resident Evil title anytime soon, but extra content is always nice. There's also a rocket launcher, machine gun, and gatling gun with infinite ammo that are able to be unlocked by beating certain scenarios quickly. This is great for future replays when you just want to charge through. And there's even bonus outfits to unlock, which we get from racing to the police station at the start without picking up a single item and getting a key from none other than a zombified Brad Vickers, the pilot from Resident Evil 1. And this even ties into Resident Evil 3 nicely as well. I was already obsessed with Resident Evil, and this game really sealed the deal for me. Every time a new title comes out and I find myself asking the question, will it be as good as Resident Evil 2? Which became an even more complicated question when the remake was released. From a great setting to interesting and well-written characters, all the way through to unique and interesting enemy design, and another amazing, haunting soundtrack. There's so much to love in this game, and that's why after more than 20 years, it's still one of my favourite games of all time, and my favourite game in the Resident Evil series. What's your favourite game for the PS1 era? Let me know in the comments below, whether it be Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, or even Gun Survivor, maybe? But until then, guys, thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below. But until next time, I've been Just Jack, and I'll see you all soon.